Welcome everyone to WCU Entertainment Review. I'm your host Jimmy and with me is Dylan. He doesn't matter. And today we're going to bring you everything in television, movies, video games, and whatever we feel like talking about at that particular moment. First we're going to start off with television. As many people have noticed, there's been a comic book revolution going on with shows like Arrow, Gotham, Marvel's Agent of the Shield, Walking Dead, iZombie, and all types of shows coming from DC and Marvel. Dylan, do you think this is a trend, or do you think this is just one of those things that's going to keep on going? Well, I mean, you have like a whole resource of culture and stuff that you can tap down. You don't even have to hire writers and stuff. I mean, you do to an extent, but it's... Okay, so we got Superman. Bam, make a show out of it. That's money, people. Well, here's the thing. That's kind of what they're going on. You're right, but here's the thing. There is now more of an option when you're writing these shows. You can either go with comic book lore, which a lot of these shows do, like Arrow has done a lot of stuff with comics, but they have also created their own version of the, that comic book lore. Uh, you've seen it since stuff like Smallville back in the early 2000s, and as it's gone along, I've seen a lot of these shows so far, and I've been pretty impressed. I think Gotham, despite the criticism that it doesn't have Batman in it, which is kind of the point of this show, they're trying to do be before Batman, so I don't really understand why they're complaining that he's not there. Um, it, Gotham, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Flash, and Arrow have all been pretty solid shows so far. I would say Arrow is a show that matters out alone because he's, they've been the consistent show since it started three years ago. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was the one in its second season. Started off pretty slow last year, got into episode 15, Captain America 2 started to play into their series, and then I think it kind of saved them because I would have been would not have been shocked if they were canceled. Yeah, I remember Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. just had a very slow first season, and then with uh, Winter Soldier happening, and then the second season reveal, just that gave the show a lot of needed air. It get, yeah, and the thing is, when you watch Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. again, it was kind of just like, well the movies in the Marvel Universe happen. Like, when they were like, we're going to do a big tie-in with Thor 2, and then you were basically cleaning up garbage from the fight at the end of Thor 2, and it was just like, well, that's not really a tie-in. It's just, you're kind of referencing it. It's a tie-in, definitely. I mean, just random trash. I mean, look at that. Well, and here's the thing. Same tire, same piece of trash. It's a dead body from the other movie. They don't talk about that. Well, it was... <laughs> Well, the thing is, they're, they're going more and more as there's going to be more shows coming. I mean, they're even talking about doing a Supergirl, car, uh, a Supergirl show. Excuse me. I don't really understand why they're going to do a Supergirl show because out of all the characters in the DC Universe, I feel like she doesn't have a great set. Um, but I really think that it would be interesting to see them do more stuff with people, more of the bigger characters and less of the smaller characters for right now. We want to talk about small characters. They're making a Squirrel Girl movie that has been confirmed. What is a Squirrel Girl? I didn't know about this either. There's a Marvel hero, DC, I don't know. I'm going to get a lot of flack for that hero called Squirrel Girl. And she's, you know, Deadpool, right? Yeah. She's Deadpool, but even more tongue-in-cheek, hee-hee, na 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 And she defeats all these Marvel villains with armies of mutant squirrels, and she's getting a movie. I feel like that would make an awesome cartoon. They probably would know, but uh, I mean, why all these things are popular is it's a very easy thing to, oh, I like Superman. Oh, there's a Superman movie or a Superman TV show. I'm going to watch that. That's very low-hanging fruit as far as the you know studios are concerned and stuff like that. And it'll be interesting to see because now they're starting to do separate universes. DC and Marvel's keeping their show, their TV universe and a movie universe tied together. In. They're tied in. But DC is making its own television universe and their own movie universe, which will be interesting to see because if you've watched uh, DC in the past, a lot of what DC has done is they'll kind of keep these shows separate. And if they're uh, having these things completely separate, it'll be interesting to see if they're allowed to bring Superman onto a show like Arrow and do a crossover, or make Batman on those shows and make them crossover, or just keep them to the movies and certain characters to the television show. So it'll be interesting to see, but we should probably move on because we got to talk about the video game industry. The summer has not been kind to video games with over a 70% drop in sales. And the thing is, you got to wonder, Dylan, is it because of the new consoles or is it because of games just not being very good? You have NCAA football not being released this year because of the contract dispute between the NCAA and the old football players. And also, UFC, the other big game that came out, was basically kind of a letdown. I think, I don't know if it's because the UFC is kind of declining or if the game just wasn't very good. I played the original two games, not played the last two, but... The gaming industry, I think, has a problem. 
Well, I mean, we're currently in a transition period between the uh, last generation and the new generation. There hasn't been any game to get for the next generation. So gamers aren't saying, oh, why should I buy the next generation if it's just going to be on here? And the developers and stuff like that aren't going out of a creative way since they realize that they have to have, oh, this has to be able to be played on Xbox 360, PS3, PS4, Xbox One, I forget what's it called, Xbox One. Xbox One. Yeah, on PC. So they're sticking to the older generation and stuff like that. Now for the consoles, I mean, like, it's showing a very slow trend, and the gamers are realizing that, why should we spend money? You're not giving us anything. And here's the thing with that, um, you know, with games that are coming out, the problem, I think, really comes down to the fact that there is, like you said, no new console game. Like, it feels like every game is being produced for the old consoles just being updated with the graphics. I mean, I remember one for the PS2, right? Oh, Grand Theft Auto 3. You play that game, you knew there was a difference between PS1 and PS2. I've not had that game yet where I've gone PS3 and PS4 are completely separate entities. I mean, I've played Assassin's Creed 4, right, Black Flag? Yeah. It was all right. It was a bigger universe, but at times you just felt like you were doing stuff. It didn't feel like the game was bigger in any way. And I think that type of stuff is just not going to help it, especially when you have a lot of the games coming out soon, like Madden just came out and uh, the NBA games just came out. When they're both being played on both systems, there's not a lot of updates to the modes inside the system inside that game. Why bother buying the new buy, buying the new system for four hundred dollars and then buying the new game for sixty bucks and just not buy the sixty dollar game for PS3? Because you want an expensive DVD player. I already have an expensive DVD player. It's called the PS3. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on the opposite side of this coin, though, uh, the PC market has seen a resurgence in incomes and just platform availability. And I don't know if that's because of the consoles or just because there's just more markets opening up. We have things like Steam, Origin, if I have to say it, good old games, Gamersgate, the website, not the issue. Uh, there's a Game Taco, I think. I, there's a few other random websites that I don't know about. But yeah, And they're offering much better packages, sales. I haven't bought a game for $20 in like two years. Triple A titles for 80% off. There are sales. You can't compete with that. And that's the thing. When you go online, especially as technology has really just changed the industry. I mean, you like look at DVDs just five, ten years ago. They were the thing. Then with the Blu-ray games may be going through that same trans transition where, you know, consoles used to be the big thing, and now maybe they're going on the computers. Because think about it. Back in the 80s, arcade machines were the big thing. Everyone thought, oh, the arcade industry will never fall apart. You mean it's dead? It's been dead for a while, man. Let it go. My quarters. What will I do with them? Anyway, we're going to move to the movie segment of this show. The summer box office was kind of a disappointment. 17-year low in sales, and no movie here in America actually broke over $500 million. There were some big bombs this summer, Dylan. We had Expendables 3, the Frank Miller Sin City uh, sequel, and the movie uh, with Tom Cruise, um, Edge, of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow, and, you know, also, even some sequels didn't really do what they wanted them to do. Amazing Spider-Man 2 didn't do as much as the previous Spider-Man. Transformers didn't do as great. And, you know, is it a trend or is it just the summer box office wasn't very good this year? What do you think? Well, we had so many sequels. And even out of the non-sequel movies, they're either like Edge of Tomorrow. That's made off of something else. We have there, everything here is a sequel or based off of something else. There's nothing original. There's nothing created just to be a movie, brand new, no cynicism, no something. Everything here is based off of something else, and people are sick of seeing the same movie every time. Transformers 4 is, I'm um, guessing that you have explosions, I would assume, giant robots. Um, is Shia buff in this one? No, but there was some dino robots. That's right. Dinosaurs they, are cool. They upgrade it. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, the guy was Shea Alabuff, so that's a positive. I think we can agree on that I one. think he was busy go, uh, standing at an art exhibit for no reason. But there's just nothing here that will actually bring an audience, except we have Guardians of the Galaxy is maybe the biggest thing this summer that actually hit. Mm -hmm. and that it was, was Guardians of the Galaxy and X-Men. Those were your two big, yeah. probably, hits. X-Men, uh, thank you for the reboot. Thank you, people who made X-Men. Thank you. You got rid of three. It's true. Good job. It was funny. We won, people. You know a movie's bad when they just go back four, ten years later and just say, didn't happen. Yeah, it was so bad. But anyway, here's the point. A lot of these movies that bombed, like Sex Tape, for example. I never even saw it's it. It's the one with uh, Cameron Diaz and Jason Siegel. It's, it's an interesting concept because you can understand it, but it's kind of one of those things where, why was that during the summer? 
I mean, that's kind of more of a movie. I think if it came out in the fall, probably would have done better. But in the summer, you know, that's your, supposed to be your big time for these movies. You know, you're supposed to be putting on your big sequels and awesome action films. And, you know, if you're going to do a comedy, it has to be something like Hangover, which is just, you know, was everyone loved The Hangover. But nobody won't really, like that show, movie, I think, should have been more the fall or maybe winter, one of those slow months. But you put it in the middle of the uh, summer, you're just asking for it to flop. Well, okay, so uh, sex tape, let's take it. There was a lot of competition, I feel, during the earlier months, like January, February, May. Captain were, America 2. Yeah, there were great movies there. If they would have put it there, it would have tanked. Nobody would have It did tank. I mean, it tanked now, but it would have <laughs> tanked worse. Summer is a time, I think, that you put throwaway movies in so that you can hide it under the big name things like Guardians of the Galaxy or X Men, Days of Future Past. That was it, correct? Yes. And what, whatever big movies were in blockbusters, you hide your bad movies there so that reviewers don't notice them. You, don't, you would not release a bad movie during the fall. It will get eaten alive. Well, tr in a lot of these movies, let's be honest. Transformers, it's, Transformers. it's a Michael Bay movie. Something's going to get blown up. Some girl's going to be wearing something skimpy, and the plot's not going to make a lot of sense. Uh, you know, Spider-Man 2. I actually like Spider-Man 2 better than I liked the first one. I don't really understand why a lot of people didn't like that. I understand there's some plot holes. There's obvious plot holes. But in terms of from the first one and the second one, I see a progression. I thought that movie was pretty decent. But, like, a movie like Frank Miller's Sin City 2, again, it's just like Michael Bay. You know what you're going to see. Just dark, angry, misogynistic stuff that nobody really wants to see anymore. Especially, that's a movie that came out in 2005. It's 2014. Why are you doing sequels to movies nine years later? I think there was a lot of hope based upon that for him anyway, that there would be some kind of fan base from the original Sin City. That, but the original fan base from Sin City would have been, what, 13, 14, 15 when that came out? True. So all those angsty teenagers aren't angsty teenagers. They're angsty 20-year-olds. And also Frank Miller is kind of, you know, even from a comic book standpoint, which we don't really cover, but <laughs> just from a comic book standpoint, a lot of his work's been kind of started to get really hammered by critics because it's the same stuff yeah he basically he's one of those things that had a, it's kind of like he is like michael bay he had a great hit in in his early career you know but his style is so obvious that like you're not going to see a transition from sin city to sin city 2 where you're like oh yeah that movie's got to really be seen i mean it's the same brooding actiony big macho man stuff and, and, and like a movie like expendables 3 i will say i their, the reason for that failing, according to Sylvester Stallone, was because of uh, pirating. Now, here's the problem with pirating. I can see that being a problem, but at some point, you've got to realize these guys are in their 60s. I don't really need to see Chuck Norris at 67, jacked up on steroids, you know, trying to play action hero anymore. It's kind of sad to a point, because at some point, it is sad. You're watching your heroes get just disintegrate oh. in front of your eyes like create new stars um and the only other movie on here that i think we both talk about is edge of tomorrow um you know i, I said I it i said it before the show started taping is you can't put tom cruise in a you know tom cruise in a movie anymore in an, as an action hero they keep doing it they keep disappointing you can't jump on the couch and be taken seriously well, it's not tom cruise uh, tom cruise is actually one trying to push himself into an action role he wants to be seen as an action hero again well, good luck with that. You're too short. Anyway, we're going to close out today's show. Uh, we'll be back very soon with some new shows. I'm Jimmy. This is Dylan. Didn't like the show. It's his fault. We'll do better next.